something. Y'all will keep it. Y'all come, you know, every Monday. Every Monday um, at night, uh, night in Red Hill. Okay. From 5 to 8. We protest. Come out. You know? Well, here we are, everybody. We're live here in Tustin. In League Press. I'm blazing on. Holler back if you guys are there. We need Tustin uh, Civic Center. Council meeting that starts at seven o'clock at Tustin Civic Center, 300 Sentinel Way. I'm going to. Well, here we have Damien. He says he's going to talk in front of the council. What are you going to say? What do you want to talk to him about, you Damien? Know, I've got a lot I want to say. I don't know how much we're going to fit in whatever, which, how much time they give me. But I think the biggest thing we're going to we're going to let them know is that uh, their little trick to try to shut this family up and sound this family uh, blew up in their face. They were you know. Uh, we stick together, we fight for each other, that's what we're doing out here. You know what, uh, these families are committed to their loved ones and we're committed to these families. So I think we're just going to go in there and we're going to let them know that, you know, uh, they're not alone and, and even though they're out here every day, they come out here, you know, they're protesting sometimes three, four days a week. They're not by themselves and even though they may feel, Sonia, right behind you, babe. Even though they might feel like they're alone, they're not alone. So we'll show up and speak for them and we've seen it succeed in every other city that we've, we've been to. So what family exactly are we talking about here? We've got the family of uh, Paul Quintanar, who was killed uh, two years ago. Uh, he was run down on the freeway after being chased by police for no reason. Uh, and then the family of Robert Villa, who was uh, shot in his front yard about two months ago. Uh, the police lied about it immediately, and they said that he was uh, he was armed with a knife, and they come to find out he was unarmed when they shot him. Uh, they shot first and made up their story later, and they changed their story. And they'll probably change their story again because we're here to we're here to let them know that we're not going to go away and we're going to continue to tell the truth as we see it. This family's voice deserves to be heard, and if we've got to speak behind them to make them loud enough, that's what we're going to do. And uh, I see you're, you're wearing this Young Survivor Legacy Support Network. 
That's right. That's our that's our that's our bread and butter. That's exactly what we do out here to to, to, to bring these families together. You know, uh, we found out a long time ago that, that our voice is a lot louder if we stick up for each other. And uh, when they start killing people, we take it personally. When they killed Robert, we came out here because we care. We know exactly what's going to happen to this family after the murder occurs. And we want to make sure that they're not taken by surprise and not taken by shock. Uh, the Young Survivors Legacy Support Network, just for that reason, to uh, take some of the shock out of the situation, to take these people who are being victimized and teach them how to survive, teach them how to fight back. And, and let them know that they got a family that's willing to stand behind them through thick and thin because this is the hardest thing that I've ever seen any family go through in my life. And I've seen, it, I've seen so many families go through it. And no matter what the circumstances of the murders are, the circumstances of the grief process and, and, and the, the, the quest for justice don't change. You know, and that's one of the things that, that we've, we've said and we've learned, actually we've discovered after protesting for the last over two and a half years is that the unity of truth doesn't stop. It, it, it's, it's what inspires us. And when we get together, whether it's Leticia speaking right now for her son, whether it's Marie speaking for her son, whether it's Genevieve speaking for her son, whether it's Sonia speaking for her brother, the stories don't change. The truth doesn't change. So all we got to do is get up here and tell the truth. Stick up for each other and tell that same truth. Their lives change on a day-to-day -day basis. Their lives change. And if we keep steady with the truth, sooner or later they're going to they're gonna have to they're gonna face up to what they've really done. And people out here are going to wake up and stop believing the lies. People want to believe these lies because it's horrible to think that that, that we live in, in cities all across the country where police get away with murder, but it happens. It happens. And the sooner we wrap our heads around the fact that it's happening, the sooner we can figure out a solution. We've got ideas for solutions. We already know what the problem is. We know the problem so much that we're full of solutions, you know, but no one's really listening to us. You know, it, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. It's been two and a half years since uh, my good friend Michael Nada was killed in the city of Downey, and they just recently came out and said that they were going to put uh, cameras, lapel cameras on the police officers. So you got to struggle thinking that you're never going to get there, you know, and it may come as a surprise, it may come years after you, you, you think that they've forgotten about you, you know, but I sincerely believe that the reason that Downey's even listening is because Tuscan's awake, because Anaheim's awake, because Long Beach is awake, because Reseda is awake, because every other town that we come to, Compton is awake, you know, that's why Downey's listening. And that's why Reseda needs to listen. Because every other city, every other family that comes from a city like this is fighting for the same thing. You know? So so, so that's thing. what the young survivors do. They're like the buffer in between uh, the police and the nightmare, the terror, right? Yeah. You know, you know? We, do is we take these kids and this is their reality. I just heard somebody say police brutality is the reality. I think it was Marie, that's her chant. You know, police brutality is the reality. And that's the thing is we're taking kids who are suffering from this reality, you know, and we're, we're teaching them how to cope. We're teaching them how to survive so that this isn't the reason everything went wrong. This is, yeah, this was a, a, a terrible time in their life, but this is where they learn what they're made of. This is where they learn, this is where they learn how to fight back. And we want to be part of that. We want to be part of that process. So we've got Leticia Villa here, and her son Robert was killed two months ago. So, you know, I, I think you probably get a chance for her to talk. Yeah, my name is Leticia Villa, and I live in the city of Tustin. And um, the city of Tustin needs to wake up because police brutality is a reality here. And that's why we're out here fighting for all the injustice, all the families that have been affected by this police brutality. And, um, you, know, um, you know, there was no reason for them to have taken my son's life the way they took him. Basically, they murdered him, and um, so that's why we're here, and we're going to continue to fight. Um, so what happened every Monday? Every Monday we have a we have a, a protest. Yes, every Monday in the city of Tustin, off of Red Hill and Nison, we have a protest um, in the corner what from time 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Five o'clock to eight o'clock. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go out there at four. You know, if you guys are to come out earlier at four. That's awesome, you know, we need all the support that we can get. You know, we have gotten a lot of support and a lot of love from the community. I just want to thank everybody that's, you know, participated and, you know, um, has guided my family and supported and, and showed a lot of love. Um, and that's why we're here. We, we're, we're together, you know, united. All these families, we're fighting together. And, um, yeah, so please, you know, come out and, and support. So here's a little plug. If you guys go to In League Press and YouTube, um, you'll be able to see Robert Villa's uh, mi micro documentary that was done by us. And maybe I'll get a little bit more background. Um, what's going on tonight? Tonight we're um, right here protesting in, the, uh, in front of um, the city council. 
This is okay, Main Street in Newport in Tustin. Yes. And uh, the city council meeting starts at 7 o'clock, am I right? Um, actually, they have a 5.30 o'clock meeting, uh, which is a private meeting, and then they have the 7 o'clock meeting for the community. And then at, at 7 o'clock, we're going to be going in there, and we're going to be talking um, to the mayor. I don't know if you're going to be talking, or I know Damien said he would like to talk to him. Yeah. Um, I believe tonight Damien's going to be talking. Um, I've done a couple, you know, talked a couple times, um, and, and we're, this is not going to stop today. We're going to have other other meetings where um, we will be ta where, where I will be talking and other mothers as well. Um, but yes, um, that's what we do. We come out here and we let them know what's going on. Did we ever get any any word on on the officers that fired the, the shot that um, killed no, your son? No, there hasn't been no word, and that's what we're demanding today. Is that we demand to know the names of the officers, the four officers that killed Robert Villa. Yeah. And that's what we're out here today demanding that. Okay, and Ro Robert Villa, rest in peace. Um, was killed by the Tustin Police Department when he asked for help. He was unarmed. He was shot in front of you, right? In the front yard. Um, have they came out with any formal statement or anything like that towards you? They have not come out at all. No, with no formal statement as far as I know. So, so then all we all we have left is is the civil litigation? I mean, as far as... as you know what I mean? That's, that's the only thing we, that we can do besides protesting and demanding justice. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's our only option? I mean, they, I mean, I'm sure there's many other options and that's what we're working on right now is we're doing these things, we're learning, you know, other options of how to go about um, letting the community, the city council, the people yeah. know, you know, that, that we're um, Well, yeah, it's a, it's a public safety issue, especially if you don't even know. Say, for instance, you were to call some... So, uh, the police, for some crazy reason, I know none of anybody out there would listen. Uh, who's listening now would call the police. But if, if you know, it's a scenario. If it happened, there's a good chance that the, the, that the cop that comes out is a murderer. I mean, and you don't even know this, and that's and that's where it becomes a public safety issue. I want to know who I'm dealing with. These people are armed with guns, you know, and and they just come into our homes. We we ask for help, and and people die. You know, so if, if you're out there tuned in. Do not call the police. Please. Film them as soon as you see them. Yes. Here we are. A little sign there. Robert Villa's mom. Right here. A little shout out. Film the police. Thank you. And thanks for your time. And remember, guys, we're on uh, Tustin. We're going to be at the Tustin City Council tonight. I think Genevieve's going to speak tonight. Um, Are you going to speak tonight? Who's Manuel Diaz's mom? Are you going to speak at City Council? Well, I hadn't planned on it. Um, are we supposed to put our cards in? I don't know. I haven't put a card. I don't know. You know, it's like whatever time they put all their business first. So I don't know. I'll think about it. You know. But yeah. There's so. a few points that, that need to be touched on. I mean, yeah. it's a public safety issue. We don't even know who shot the. the I mean, there was yeah. one, more than one officer, I guess, right? Right, right. That's and we what know that. Saying. So yeah, they have to. They have to release the names of the officers that shot and killed Robert Villa. He was an innocent man, did not have a weapon in his hand, and you know, just like with so many other victims of police brutality and police terror, police murder, you know, there's a lot of these cases that they are unarmed, they're not committing a crime, you know, on and on with the story. We have lists, we have so many names of people that, young men, sometimes women that are killed by police. So, yeah, it's real important to get all these uh, names out of the police that killed Robert Villa because they probably killed someone else, and we don't know that. Right, they or could they, be, they, they could be, uh, in the future. yeah, and they, today, could be, they could be dispatched to our house, you know, yeah. or, uh, you know, and uh, they could be in, called out to Anaheim, I mean, right. how crazy is that, you know? Right. We've seen Justin in Anaheim. Yeah, before. we all have seen them, you well, know, yeah, in cities that we live Well, yeah, they're all militarized police now. They come out on their big old... Their units, whatever they call them, they're all militarized. Right. And they just come town to town and intimidate people. They go into the neighborhoods. They scare people where they don't even want to come out in the evenings and socialize because they might get shot at for any reason. And it's for people of all color. You know, we talk about it, brown, Asian, black, and white. We're all in the same struggle and we're all in the same fight. So that's something real important to me because we know it's not just one. 
one race or ethnicity. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Wake up, Justin! Wake up! Police brutality is reality! Wake up!
I guess I'm going to shut it down for a minute, guys. Um, we'll be back on when the city council meeting starts up. Um, you guys tune in probably a little after 7. And uh, we'll have Damien talking to these guys down here. This is In Lead Press, live from Tuscany.